So head and neck cancer, most of the time, they present in the area that we use daily, speaking, talking, swallowing. Um, most of these patients have locally advanced disease, but they do not metastasize. Um, and so the challenges of treating these uh, patients is to somehow take care of the cancer without affect the quality of life and long-term functioning um, of the patient. Um, so there, now we know that there are two types of head and neck cancer. One of them is the traditional type, which is related to smoking, drinking, betel nut chewing, tobacco chewing. And the other type is rising in the developed country, is related to the virus called the human papillomavirus or HPV virus. It's the same type of virus that causes um, cervical cancer in women. And it now we know that it causes um, uh, head and neck cancer, mainly the tonsil and in the back of the tongue for men. Um, so these patients tend to be younger when they present, um, tend to have very uh, sensitive uh, cancer that's sensitive to treatment, such as radiation and chemotherapy. They live longer, they're more curable, but they can live a long time with the side effects of the treatment. So the challenge is how to maintain the high curability of these patients while minimizing the side effects of therapy. So that's what the, the my focus will be talking about the data that we have just recently have on a couple of large clinical trial focusing on these patients. So there were two study. Um, one of them is run by us, um, the North America. Um, it used to be known as RTOG and is now known as uh, Energy Oncology. And it's a very large randomized trial, about 800 plus patients. And comparing patients to this traditional treatment with everybody's got radiation. The comparison is standard cisplatin chemotherapy versus a biologic treatment known as atuximab. That's also been approved for head and neck. The, uh, so the, the question we ask is, is atuximab just as good as cisplatin? And does it have less toxicity? And the other trial that was actually run in the UK is called Deescalate. It is a much smaller study and that study has the same, uh, have the same kind of randomization. They asked the question mainly on toxicity. Both study, interesting enough, came out at the same time, and they show that the toxicities are the same. They're adding, they're putting a, slotting in a biologics to cisplatin didn't really impact the toxicity, but it actually decreased survival in patients uh, who are very highly curable. And so I think we have to get back to the drawing boards. We're still, the standard is still radiation and chemotherapy. The question is, can we do something better without compromising survival, um, such as bringing in immunotherapy or uh, be more clever in how to give the radiation or the chemotherapy?